Board proceedings will now come to order. Uh, we'll start with the pledge. Uh, first of all, uh, push your attend buttons. Okay, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Supervisor Locke with the invocation. Bless us as we gather for this meeting. Guide our minds and hearts so that we will work for the good of our community. Teach us to be generous in our outlook, courageous in the face of difficulty, and wise in our decisions. Amen. Amen. Supervisor Robel. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll move for the adoption of this evening's agenda. It's been moved and seconded to adopt this evening's agenda. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Is there anybody from the public that would like to speak on anything on the agenda this evening? Now is your chance to talk. Is there anybody from the public that would like to speak on anything on the agenda this evening? Now is your chance. Okay, that portion of the meeting will be closed. Communications and petitions from the clerk. We have a number of claims and some resolutions from other counties. Uh, the first is a claim from Jess Kimball for damages to a vehicle after he hit a pothole on one of the county highways referred to personnel and finance. A notice of claim from Angela Canterbury for Damage caused to her vehicle after hitting a large pothole. Refer to Personnel and Finance Committee. Notice of claim from Badger Mutual Insurance for Brian Kozlowski for damage due to, caused to his vehicle after it was in, involved in an accident with a Sheriff's Department vehicle. Referred to Personnel and Finance. Notice of claim from Timothy L. Henderson for damage from multiple incidents while he was an inmate at the county jail, referred to personnel and finance. Notice of claim from William Kramer for reimbursement uh, for the replacement of tires caused when he hit a, an object on Highway 10, referred to personnel and finance. A notice of claim from April Sunby for damage to her vehicle caused by snow being pushed off of a Highway 41 overpass by a county snowplow referred to personnel and finance. Um, we also have a claim from Nationwide Insurance Company for Ben Van Lankvelt for damage to his vehicle caused by a county snowplow referred to personnel and finance. We have a resolution from Door County in support of Senate Bill 566 regarding statewide 911 emergency telecommunications system referred to legislative committee. Resolution from Manitowoc County supporting Assembly Bill 429, which, is, uh, which would set the minimum age for a marriage efficient to be at least 18 years of age, referred to the Legislative <coughs> Committee. A resolution from Ottagamie County opposing uh, legislation that would lift the state law limiting non-resident alien land ownership, referred to the Legislative Committee. Another resolution from Ottagamie County they support legislation that would require the Department of Corrections to develop a system of graduated sanctions for violations of conditions of release and permits, the, and permits uh, the sanctions to be imposed on the individual and allows the district attorney to use this gradua graduated sanctions system. Referred to the legislative committee. Legislation from, or resolution rather, from Price County uh, asking that Governor Walker mandate enough propane supply be held in reserve in case of severe weather or shortage of propane suppliers in the future. Referred to Legislative Committee. And then a uh, resolution from Rock County regarding the creation of a new nonpartisan procedures for legislative and congressional redistricting. Uh, they support that type of legislation. And that's referred to the Legislative Committee. That's all. 
Supervisor Eisen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd like to share uh, an informational item uh, uh, that I had viewed a webinar by the uh, Wisconsin Counties Association. Uh, this item uh, addresses uh, the county organizational meeting that we'll have next month. And I'd like to uh, give uh, our fellow supervisors a, uh, uh, a uh, link uh, that they can view this webinar. It's about a 40-minute webinar, and it uh, has a power uh, a point uh, which will prepare you uh, for the organizational meeting. Uh, please visit www wicounties.org slash forward slash uh, events forward slash uh, the number uh, sign uh, past dash event dash materials. And this uh, webinar goes through the whole organizational process and of particular interest uh, on the slide uh, is uh, especially when it advises, as does Robert's rules, that in elections you never drop off the lowest candidate uh, in a election. Uh, you always take additional votes until you uh, have a winning candidate. And uh, I, I've from past experience, I, I think that a heads up on this issue is probably relevant. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Fari. Uh Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I hope this is an out of order, but I'd, I'd like to take the opportunity to recognize a high school that is uh, within Winnebago County. Uh, the Nina High School, Nina Rockets, uh, made it all the way to state this year, played in the Division I championship. Uh, excellent game, and uh, I, I would hope everybody watched it. If you didn't, it was a very good game, and just take a minute to recognize that. Who was that number 35 that made all them? His pointers? name was Ty Haig. Oh. I believe he's related to the gentleman right next to me. It's, it's, it's the one that's beat red right now. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think he's proud as heck. Uh, he, oh, should yeah. he should be. Seeing that you're on that same subject, Mr. Egan, would you tell us some more Final Four information? Well, thank you, and I want to congratulate Mr. Haig. Uh, very honorable. We did watch that game. We were down at Stevens Point for the um, Sweet 16 and the Elite 8. My son plays for Whitewater, and they won both their games. So we'll be going to the Final Four. We'll be leaving tomorrow and hopefully bringing back the championship from down there. We did two years ago, so thank you. Well, thank you. Supervisor Haig. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the, the kind words, and I also wanted to congratulate Coach Bork and everybody involved with the NINA program, including the boosters and uh, all the board members there, all the fans. Uh, it was really a, an outstanding trip. Um, secondly, I was giggling before, and it wasn't just because of uh, Supervisor Eisen's tie. It was because of the way it was positioned above Supervisor Rowe's head in the TV monitor. <laughs> <laughs> It looked, it looked real cute. It was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I, I, um, I don't know much about the city of Oshkosh, so please forgive me and bear with me, but those, those uh, members of, of this board who are from Oshkosh probably are more in tune with something called the pub crawl. Um, I've had some correspondence recently with a few members, uh, a few citizens of the city of Oshkosh who are very concerned with the upcoming pub crawl, and I'm not sure the date. Apparently there's one in the spring and one in the fall. Um, however, it, it seems to me, and I, I had an email here that I, I've lost because I talked too long about Supervisor Rowe and his pretty green bow, um, but it seems like the person who needed to take out um, the licensing and whatnot for the spring pub crawl did not approach the, the Oshkosh City Council in time to do so this year. Um, and it appears as though if the pub crawl goes on as scheduled, 
that there will not be uh, increased uh, surveillance, police uh, protection for the campus, et cetera, as there should be. So I would hope that those uh, members of this board who are citizens of Oshkosh and even those who aren't would contact the Oshkosh City Council or the city police or whomever might be in charge of uh, um, getting this program maybe maybe wiped off uh, the campus or if it's not a campus activity. I, I don't think it is. It sounds like the Oshkosh uh, campus president is not in favor of, of the pub crawl. But uh, if we can do what we can to try to eliminate these types of activities, uh, I think we're all the, the better for, for doing so. So thank you. I can, I can assure you that they will have proper people on staff to look after it. Is there anybody else that would like to report on anything on their committees, commissions, or boards? Supervisor Rule. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would just like to report, for those of you that aren't aware, that last week at the Facilities and Property Management Committee, there were two votes taken on the Tri-County Ice Arena. The first one was in reference to a one-year contract. That resolution was unanimously defeated. Uh, the second resolution uh, was with respect to an RFP, which was unanimously approved. And the first step of that RFP will be a meeting at the facility at 9 a.m. on April 1st. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, approval of proceedings from the February 11th, 2014 meeting. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any additions or corrections? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Carried. <coughs> County Executive's report. Uh, tonight on your agenda, you have item 316 which is appropriating $1.8 million for a reconstruction project of County Trunk Highway T from GG to G. That's a fairly important project and I would urge approval of that project. You also have three resolutions on your agenda tonight uh, with regard to pay for three elected officials, the sheriff, the clerk of courts, and the coroner. Uh, those raises are not to take effect until November, but the reason they come before the board at this time is because those have to be approved prior to the date that uh, nomination papers can be taken out for those offices. So this is the appropriate time of year of the year to have those brought. And that's all I have for you tonight. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Supervisor Gilson is under the weather, so she won't be attending. I didn't hear from Supervisor Barker, but uh, that's all I have to have, other than the final four families that did well in the basketball tournament. Uh, so at this time, I'd like to call up Ernie Winters. Uh, from the Winnebag He's the Winnebago County Highway Commissioner. He'll be giving us a presentation on County Trunk Highway I and N intersection. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I passed out a, a little handout, a little outline of the, uh, the project I'd like to talk to you a little bit about tonight. And on the, uh, the back couple of pages are a couple of pictures that will give you a little perspective. This project is uh, the intersection of County Highway N and I. We've planned for this project and we're hopeful of reconstructing this this coming construction season. Um, this project's been identified as part of our capital improvement plan for reconstruction in 2014. It's part of a larger project that extends from the Oshkosh city limits south to County N. The design of this project was undertaken several years ago and uh, the specifications for the intersection have been completed and the right of way was purchased this past winter. This phase of the project will reconstruct this intersection um, as you may know, it turns to the west 
on end towards 41. Um, and then Fisk Avenue also abuts the intersection, which is the town of Black Wolf Road. The project will totally reconstruct it and widen the intersection and will add turning lanes for two of the movements. There'll be some limited curb and gutter in the intersection and some storm sewer installed as part of the project. The blinking stop signs that are, that are there now will be retained. A roundabout was originally considered for this intersection. However, traffic counts and turning movement counts, which are used to evaluate the, you know, if it's warranted for signals or roundabouts, um, didn't meet the minimum requirements to put in signals. In addition, we did get quite a bit of input, I guess you could say, from locals that weren't really too interested in seeing a roundabout in that location. So we made uh, a decision not to install it at this time. Besides the accident history that we have seen there, um, the general condition of the pavement and shoulders and drainage are poor and do warrant a, an improvement. Uh, the existing intersection dates back to the mid 70s in terms of the last time it was paved. Um, the pavement's 24 feet wide, somewhat narrow, narrower on Fisk Avenue. It's pretty well cracked up and rutted and showing signs of coming apart. Typical pavement maintenance, crack filling, seal coating, chip sealing, even a mill and pave really won't address the problems. There are problems with the base materials underneath the road. The traffic volumes we're seeing at that intersection are about 3,500 cars a day, a large portion of that being trucks. It does bear a lot of traffic. The second phase or part of this is the drainage. We have seen quite a bit of um, flooding in that area periodically when the ground is saturated um, and we get heavy storms. There's a large drainage basin to the west in the town of Nakaimai that has to go through that intersection after a long run through the county road ditches. Um, we did accommodate that in this design and the new intersection should go quite a long way in helping with those drainage problems. Part of the problem is too the road, the road ditch is flat and it's just tough to get it to move very quickly. The remainder of this corridor from 35th Avenue in the city south to uh, Ripple, or actually all the way south to INN, is also under design. Um, the portion from 35th to Ripple will be constructed. Um, it's planned for a four-lane um, concrete curb and gutter storm sewer that'll match the cross-section that's currently existing in the city, and that'll extend out to Ripple. And the remaining piece, I think it's about a mile and a half, two miles from Ripple south to the intersection that we're talking about this evening will be more of a standard mill and pave. We will add a, uh, a wider shoulder on one side for bikes and pedestrians. The major portion of this project will be let to bid. The cost estimate is about $950,000. We are kind of refining that prior to the next county board meeting. Personnel and finance, as well as the highway committee have discussed this project and passed it on to the county board for presentation. Um, I will be bringing a resolution back in April for to approve the funding, hopefully. So I appreciate being allowed to present on this and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Supervisor Haig. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In regards to the project being totally uh, reconstructed and widening the existing intersection, adding uh, turn lanes for two movements, are those the left turn lanes? Is they, that it would be southbound, a right turn lane to N to head to 41, and then coming in on N from 41, a left turn, it would mirror each other, a left turn north on uh, I. Okay. I just see a lot of these new intersections with the left turn lanes that are uh, away from traffic seemingly with a flashing right. yellow arrow. So. Se sort of segregated left turn, right. yeah. We didn't have the counts there to really warrant doing much more than what we're doing as far as turn lanes. Yeah, it sounds like this is pretty simple. Thank you. Supervisor Wagner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Winters, um, will this uh, intersection be closed during that period? It, we do have some large pipes to install. So the days the pipes are going in, it'll be closed tight. We'll try to give plenty of public notice. The rest of the time, local traffic will be able to get through. Okay, so we're talking just a few days or? 
it's it's really should be a pretty quick project. Forty five to fifty days it should be done. I'm I'm talking about being closed for the oh, um maybe a, a week altogether. Okay. Thank you. Supervisor Brennan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ernie, in regards to the the other piece that you mentioned, where they're going to be, which would be the next phase there. Uh, if I heard you correctly, you said they're going to start at 35th Street and go forward because that already is a four lane there. Right. Is there intent to correct the drainage issues there because the two culverts that are there are inadequate to say the least and that's yes. always that's flooding? The, actually one of the driving forces behind the project is to correct the drainage. Okay, thank you. Supervisor Rule. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ernie, a very, very, very minor correction. In the last paragraph, you said the Personnel and Finance Committee discussed this project at the meeting held on March 26th. Should be February 26th. Oh, thank you. No problem. Duly noted. Supervisor Olson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Quick question, Ernie. Um, what determines the use of a roundabout? Is there a criteria, or is it just because people don't like them, so we're not going to build them? <clears throat> it, it's meant to, to follow the warrants for signals. Generally speaking, if you meet the warrants for signals and you have a, a crash history that seems to indicate a lot of crashes at speed, then generally they're warranted. But th there are some other factors. Well, this, you said that, that this was a dangerous intersection, and you also said that um, there's a 3,400 vehicles a day right so that seemed to me to be some criteria to consider roundabout and and we did we did we we did consider the roundabout we did get an awful lot of local input and yeah, they don't want it <laughs> well and a lot of folks don't still don't like them they are getting more and more right. accepted um they didn't this intersection did not meet the warrants for signals okay and usually the roundabout warrants follow the signal warrants more or less well we when they went on these this uh, construction orgy the last couple of of uh, years up in my neighborhood they were building roundabouts left and right and I think there's some intersections that certainly don't meet that warrant so right. um, I was just wondering what the criteria was yeah okay yeah. thank you you're welcome okay thank you thank you Resolution number 313-3214, authorize Emergency Management Department to accept the grant of $6,229 and apply the funds to a hazardous materials incident exercise. Supervisor Rule. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would move for the approval of resolution number 313-3214. Then moved and seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Resolution number 314-32014. Appropriate $24,000 from the 2013 General Fund undesignated fund balance to the capital outlay account of Facilities and Property Management Department 2014 budget for the purchase of a replacement van. Supervisor Wingren. No, Supervisor Hamlin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would move for the approval of resolution 314-32014. Second. Then moved and seconded. <laughs> Supervisor Haig. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Didn't we just go through a, a budget process where something like this would have been identified as a, as, as a need? Can somebody from that uh, committee help me out with that? Would you restate your your question? It seems to me we just went through a a budget process for for 2014, and we're replacing a van already. So I guess the question is, didn't we know that this van needed replacing uh, during the budget process in October? It was in an accident. Super. Go ahead. Um, this van was broadsided by an individual that ran a stop sign in the city of Oshkosh, and because of the age and mileage of the vehicle, it was totaled out by um, the insurance people. So if uh, we'd have known earlier, we would have put something like this in the budget, but since the budget was already passed and we need the vehicle, I have to come before you for um, the funding for it. 
so how does that work then with the in insurance money? Does that d get reimbursed to the the general fund when we get the when when the insurance companies work out what the reimbursement will be or the the market value or the replacement value of the the truck will be um, that would come back to the general fund. Thank you. Thank you. Then moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Second. Authorize the district attorney's office to a, a resolution number 315 32014. Authorize the district attorney's office to accept the grant funding of $57,489. That amount isn't, was incorrectly put there. It should be $48,356. So with that correction on uh, and apply for funds to compass evaluation position associated with the tool evaluation program. Supervisor Wingman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move approval of resolution 3153-2014 with the correction that you just made. Okay. Move and second it. Supervisor Widener. No. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as I read through this, it looks like a, a very good program, but I'm a little uh, concerned about the, the last resolu or the last resolved where it talks about this position will be sunset when the grant funding is no longer available. I guess my question is, if, if this is a good program, why will we not evaluate it at the end of the term, which I assume is one year, and determine whether we should continue it? If it's not a good program, and we're only doing it because we're, doing it, we're getting money from the state or wherever, then I would really question whether we should be doing it at all. Thank you. Uh, this is actually one position in an entire program, um, and it's a program that is now in, I believe, its fifth year. So what's happened is it started out as a three-year grant, um, and the grant then became a one-year renewable grant after that. The reason the Office of Justice Assistance switched it to one year from three years is because the federal funding is um, less predictable than it used to be. So. Uh, the idea is that the funding will continue for the position. However, we have to put in for a new grant every year now. Um, and with this one position, what we've been able to do is we've converted this grant to various positions to experiment with different ideas on the overall program. So the program is a drug diversion program. At one point, this grant money funded half of a program coordinator position. It funded at one point an AODA counselor. Um, now we've been using it, or we're going to use it for a uh, risk needs assessment person. However, the program continues to go on throughout time. The people are in place, the program's in place. This is just one position that's helping us figure out who to put in the program, how to better predict who will succeed in the program, things of that sort. So I, if, if what I hear you saying is that the program is uh, expected to continue, in the event that uh, the grant would no longer be uh, um, available to us, would we consider or would we uh, put it in our budget to do it ourselves? Um, we did with one of the prior positions. One of the prior positions we determined um, the cost benefit was not there, so we stopped um, utilizing it for a half-time AODA counselor. The program coordinator position became essential um, for this and other programs, and we actually created a, a fee structure for the program to offset the cost of that position that the grant used to fund. So if the way that the grant is being utilized proves to be effective and is beneficial to the program, then we look for ways to incorporate that into the program permanently. Thank you. Yes, sir. Supervisor Smith. Uh, that's okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I've uh, had my question answered. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. <coughs> Resolution number 316-32014, appropriate $1,800,000 for a project to reconstruct County Highway T from GG to County Highway G in the town of Inland. Supervisor Robel, we also received a presentation on this just recently. Yeah, Supervisor thank you, Mr. Robel. Chairman. 
I'll move for approval of resolution 316-32014. Second. And moved and seconded. Supervisor Eisen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is a question for a finance director. Uh, Mr. Orenstein, uh, approximately what kind or uh, level of, uh, uh, of uh, interest rate uh, are we looking at on bonds that would uh, accommodate this kind of a borrowing? Uh, I know that for the longest time we've been uh, experiencing very low interest rates, but what is the outlook uh, for this experience and for others that we'll encounter in the short term? From the last I heard, the rates are in the neighborhood of two to three and a half percent. That's a bargain in the big picture. Thank you. Supervisor Widener. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just got a quick question from Mr. Winters. Um, as I, re I, I realize you made a presentation on this last, last session, and I do agree with the fact that uh, we probably should be repairing that building, but you got a comment in here that says address safety concerns. What concerns do we have on that road? Generally speaking, it's, it's narrow. There's not much shoulder on it. Um, this improvement will widen it out a little bit, put a paved shoulder on it, and make it a little more car friendly at the intersections. They're, they're pretty narrow and tight as well. There's only two intersections on the whole road. Right. Okay, thank you. Oh. Go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, the other question I have is we have now gone from Y to uh, GG and now we're going to go to G. Is there any plan to continue on T sit down to, say, Larson Road? Actually, there, there is. That's in the capital improvement program for the future, and I've applied for federal and state funding for that portion as well. Okay. Thank you. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Carried. Resolution number 317-32014. Request authority to apply to the Department of Natural Resources for funds to restock fish in Community Park Pond number 2 and to commit such funds as may be made available towards restocking projects. Supervisor Finch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I move for a 317 dash 32014. If there are any questions, Rob is sitting in the back. Supervisor Widener. Uh, thank you again, Mr. Chairman. Um, since I'm on a roll, I want to keep going here. Just have a quick question here. In the uh, second whereas, it goes down the last sentence. It says, mobility impaired individuals. Is that uh, religion speak for being handicapped? So are we going to have to change all of our signs now from handicapped to mobility uh, impaired? No. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Resolution number 318-32014. Request authority to apply for funds for maintenance of Winnebago County owned lease snowmobile trails. Supervisor Finch. Chairman, I move for 318. Dash, three two zero one four. Been moved and seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Resolution number three one nine three two zero one four. Application for funding aid from the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources to assist in repaving a portion of the Eureka Boat Landing parking lot. Supervisor Finch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for 319-32014. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Supervisor Egan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Rob, can you tell me what portion of this is going to be redone? Because we just done this boat landing just a few years ago, and I was down there today, and I was kind of looking at it. So in other words, you're going to redo that whole back part. It's not just repaving of it. You're correct. It, 
It will be a milling, and we'll probably be adding a lot of base to it as well. It's in pretty tough shape. Okay, thank you. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Resolution number 320-32014. Application for funding aid from the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. Agreement, uh, authorize an agreement with the Department of Natural Resources for Winnebago County to op operate a tribal heritage crossing of the Wheel Wash Trail. Supervisor Finch. Um, are we on 20 or 21? We can do 21 first, Dave, and then come back. I don't care. Well, I, didn't I just do 20? No. Oh, that, okay, that, I'm sorry. I, that, that was boom day. Resolution number 320 Application for funding aid from the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources to assist in installation of an asphalt top coat and bollards of the Boom Bay Boat Landing parking lot. Supervisor Finch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll move for 320-32014. Moved and seconded. Supervisor Olson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a quick uh, question for my own benefit here. Both of these provide a minimum in matching funds in order to meet its cost-sharing obligation. Where do those funds come from? How do we match the funds? What is it in, in a budget but, already? Yeah, we we have those in our fund currently. So if we did not get that grant, uh, we could go ahead with the project. But uh, the funding comes from boat registration from the waterways funding. Okay, thank you. Supervisor Ramos. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I had a related question, which I think was answered actually by the director. I was simply going to ask, because this was in regards to matching funds and that there was funds allocated uh, for the full funding, indeed was there plan to go forward both with 319 and 320, even if we don't get the funding. I'm assuming based on your response, the answer would be yes. Is that correct? Thank you. Rob, he's asking if that's correct. The, the that funding. is correct, yeah. Okay. Author resolution 321. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Resolution 321 3214. Authorize an agreement with the Department of Natural Resources for Winnebago County to operate the tribal heritage crossing of the Weowash Trail. Supervisor Finch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll move for 321 32014. Then moved and seconded. Supervisor Eisen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, looking at the uh, resolution and looking at the uh, contract, uh, is it correct that this uh, contract would be effective as of October 1st, 2013? Uh, or is that just uh, uh, the planning fr previously and was not updated? Uh, no, that's that the, the time frame. That would be the framework that the uh, DNR put it in. In large part, they're responsible for the writing of the contract. However, what they're keying in on is when it transferred over from the DOT to the DNR, it was kind of the official point at which that transfer was made. It started with the DOT uh, constructing it, and then under an agreement it transferred over to the DNR, and they simply... Um, I think are using that date to pinpoint. So it is, it is correct that it's retroactive uh, in respect to what we're asked to attest to? Only if you agree on it. Okay. <laughs> Supervisor Furry. Uh Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I need to ask the question. Um, this is the new trail along the 41 corridor, do, am I correct? Correct. Uh, I have not been on that, uh, but uh, I have been told that uh, that is a very nice facility. Uh, uh, a lot of places to fish from. There's a lot of signage. 
I believe that's a paved walkway, if I understand correctly. It is. Uh, if we assume this responsibility, does that substantially add to the cost the county would would have to bear to maintain and keep that section up? I mean, are we buying into a lot of maintenance and upkeep here? I can answer that from a, a standpoint of uh, just observation, having been on it, and until we actually go through it for a year or two, I, I have to qualify this, but from uh, my initial impression, everything's been built up there to last. We work with the DNR in the planning process, so we know what's gone into the, uh, the construction of not only the pavement, the base, the, uh, the kiosks up there. Uh, everything would indicate that it's substantial and it's going to withstand the test of time. Um, I will say that I did do numbers on this for uh, not having to be involved with the, the fixtures that are up there, the kiosks. If no damage occurs or no early wear, standard maintenance on it should run at approximately 4000 a year. That's all labor and equipment and so forth. Um, that is a bit higher than our norm because of the transportation costs to get up there, but it's, it's aside from that, it really runs at about the same cost as what we'd have for the normal trail. Uh, in, in the resolution, it indicates we're going to try to give a mile back to Oshkosh, and they would assume responsibility for that. Is that correct? We have been in conversations with that, and we're working towards that, and that, that would come before you as well, perhaps in the next several months. Do we spend $4,000 a year maintaining that mile? No, we don't. Uh, and 10 years from now, 20 years from now, we would be assuming the responsibility and the maintenance of this uh, very nice improved uh, trail? I mean, you're, you're saying it's 4,000 here to maintain it. I assume that means snow plowing too, I'm not sure. But oh, that's, that's a good point. We. I mean, are we getting into something that 10, 20 years from now is going to cost us a fortune to maintain and keep up? But, but let me address from the, uh, you, you brought up a good point for maintenance during the winter. Uh, from, for logistical purposes, uh, it, it's not going to be possible to maintain that trail in the winter. Uh, you, you can understand why with the snow plowing and snow removal activities and how they're going to affect that, that trail to uh, directly off to the east. So. It was taken over with the understanding that we had no obligation to maintain it in the winter and we don't plan to do so. Uh, so our costs are going to be mainly in the summer. And yes, out 10 years, there might be some costs incurred with maintaining the kiosks and so forth. I can't calculate what that would be right now, but we do have plans for trying to uh, establish some sort of trust, uh, perhaps involving the Indian tribes to uh, try to build up an escrow account to uh, maintain anything that might be of significance up there. If this board uh, decides not to assume this responsibility, responsibility uh, what would become of that trail? Whose responsibility would it be then? The DNR. The DNR would retain that responsibility. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Supervisor Olson. My colleague, Mr. Fari. Asked all the questions I was going to ask. Thank you. Supervisor Finch, you would. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Supervisor Furry brought up a good point. He's heard it's a very nice trail and nice scenery and stuff like that. Over the past, what, three weeks, Dave, you and I have been talking. Maybe some way we can get together and have a tour for the county board, either on a Saturday or doing his tour. Uh, I have talked to some of the county board supervisors already. And some of them said you'd rather have it on a Saturday only because of the fact that some of our supervisors still work. So therefore, they would have the same opportunity of taking the tour. But this is in the future. So uh, we hope within the next two, three months, we'll have it all ironed out. So, and it is a beautiful trail. Thank you. Supervisor Ramos. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just, a, just a quick question. Because we're looking at uh, taking over the maintenance of this section kind of in lieu of uh, turning over the other portion to the city of Oshkosh, is there a reason why we're pursuing this now versus waiting until we've kind of completed the finalization 
uh, in regards to the other uh, piece of the trail that uh, the city of Oshkosh would maintain in the future? Uh, I'd hoped to bring this before you at least several months ago, but it got held up in Madison with some of the DNR officials down there. So this, this process should have been completed, but we're approaching spring and summer, and that, that trail really is right now ready to be uh, pretty much cleaned up. It's in pretty tough shape at the moment with all the, the residue that's, that's been brought over from the uh, stone removal process. So it's, it's due to be cleaned up, uh, hopefully sooner rather than later. But it, it, this is not contingent necessarily on that, that trade-off, if you would, of the, uh, the marine drive to, um, to the university portion. I mean, this is somewhat independent of that. The reason I ask is that in the resolution, it doesn't look contingent, but it certainly looks like they're married together, and we're looking at offsetting those costs. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering why we aren't potentially making it contingent upon that. That would be up to you. It's, it's not contingent, but it shows an offset. It, um, right. Typically, trails that are within city limits, as state trails go, are, are usually maintained by that municipality, and this is... Uh, let's call it a correction, uh, perhaps, and what, what probably should have evolved initially, the city really should have had that portion to start with, but the county did move ahead with it um, some years ago, back in 94, and, and by all rights, I think the uh, city would like to have that portion. Mr. Chairman, if I can make an, an amendment, um, I guess I'd like to make an amendment to make this contingent upon that. To me, this resolution is about offsetting those two. Um, so I don't know if I can uh, potentially add the wording on line uh, 18 to say, whereas the Winnebago County Parks Department is in the process of completing final trail maintenance tasks required as part of the arrangements for, and then add the words, and contingent upon turning over operation of the Marine Drive, the Wisconsin Street Bridge, segments of the Wyoash Trail to the city of Oshkosh. Um, I guess I would like to make this uh, contingent upon that because really that's what we're looking at is offsetting those two. And I, I, I guess I want to make sure that that happens. Aye. No. The uh, arrangements were that we would finish up in some maintenance of it, kind of doing some housekeeping on it, and then at that point we would address it. Um, we still had one or two things uh, to go through. However, the, uh, it was weather contingent, so uh, it probably won't be at least for another month till we address those items. After that, I, I would guess we could move ahead. Their parks board will sign off on it, and then the city council will sign off on it, agree to it. Am I, am I hearing that right? So it will be about April until they'll, they'll agree to it? Well, again, there were two items that were still outstanding for, as I term them, housekeeping items for, for maintenance, minor, but uh, some of this agreement was contingent on that. So I can't answer that, whether it being weather dependent on, on whether we can get out there and address them within that month period. The 
the amendment is kindly. Who's online? 18. It's on line 18. Tasks required as part of the arrangements for turning over and contingent upon turning over operation of the Marine Drive to Wisconsin Street Bridge segment of the Wyawash Trail to the city of Oshkosh. Do you want me to complete the whole paragraph? Or that was, that was the contingent upon turning over Marine Drive to Wisconsin Street Bridge segment of Wyawash Trail to the city of Oshkosh. Oh. Julie, can you get them a battery or something? You're, you're eliminating you that? No, we're adding that as part of the arrangements for turning over and contingent upon turning over operation of the Marine Drive okay. to Wisconsin Street Bridge. So you're setting up a contingency. It was the contingent upon okay. the that city of Thank Oshkosh. You. Go ahead. Um, I'm going to vote against this amendment because we're just talking about a $4,000 annual increase in maintenance costs for trails for something that, you know, the DNR wants our parks to take over the maintenance of, which I think is a good thing for the county to do. And we're really not talking about a lot of money here. And we want to hold this arrangement off for another month and actually possibly two months because our next meeting is an April 15th organizational meeting. I don't know if we meet again in April after that. So we're talking May. Um, why, I don't know why we need to hold this up on contingent on giving a portion of the trail over to the city for maintenance. So I'm going to be voting against this amendment and voting for just passing this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else that wanted to speak on the amendments? Supervisor Finch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm also going to vote against this amendment. And the reason being is that um, right now we're concerned about $4,000 to maintain what people walk, what people ride, what people sightsee. Heck, we spend more than that on, on the soccer fields. I never hear any complaints about that. Here, with this is taxpayers' dollars where taxpayers are having the opportunity to utilize it and see the beauty of Winnebago County, the, the walkway, the water, the whole nine yards. I mean, what more could you ask for for $4,000? Who else wanted to talk? Joel? Yes, thank you. Uh, my comments that I had, I think, are appropriate for the amendment here. Um, I was going to say that that trail was finished late last fall, and uh, I live fairly close to that and was on it a few times, and it's very popular. And now that this conversation has gone on, um, I talked to somebody today just by coincidence here that it's on the agenda that was up there this spring already, and they said, well, the snow is all melted off, but it needs sweeping, it needs a little cleaning. And now that, you know, I'm just thinking this is not going to get cleaned, this is not going to happen, um, it's a very popular trail. It, I think it's very good for our area, and I would hate to see it not being maintained right from the start, that it would have a blemish like that on it, so I won't support the amendment either. Okay, we'll vote on our little iPad on the amendment. You wanted to talk on the amendment? Okay. If need me, I will volunteer to hand paint that city portion of this trail there for you, starting tomorrow if you want me to. Okay, we'll vote on our little iPad. Vote aye if you approve the amendment, no if you don't.
that it's failed. Now back to the original resolution. Supervisor Haig. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In, in regards to the maintenance, since this is a, a state and federal funded uh, pedestrian trail, does that mean that it is required to be um, plowed, et cetera? I know you said that there, there may be times when we can't and that, but I'm familiar with these types of trails, especially like the Trestle Trail in the town of Menasha there, and it's required that it be lit and plowed and passable 365 days a year. Is this the same? I've talked with the DNR, uh, the uh, regional trails coordinator, and he said it's up to the trail manager, being the county, to decide what the policies are, and uh, he indicated that it would be fine not to tra uh, plow it in the winter. Is that any part of, of this resolution or the contract? It's not necessary that it, it become part of it. Um, this is mainly dealing with turning over the trail for maintenance and operational uh, functions. It's, it's up to the county to decide what sort of rules and policies would take place on the trail as long as they fall within some of the, uh, the guidelines that the, the uh, state does apply for its, its rules. And most of those deal with, um, with fees, fee structure. That's just the concern is I've seen these happen before where the money comes from a source other than the local jurisdiction and because of that there's an incredible amount of, of uh, red tape involved in, in the maintenance of it. So that's, that's really the concern is you, somebody told that to you but is it, is it in writing somewhere? Do we, do we know for sure that we're not going to have to do that? I don't know. Thank you. Okay, there are no other questions. We'll vote by mich or iPad. Uh, vote aye if you approve. No if you disapprove. You have to flip that button on the side. Tim? That is passed. Resolution 322-32014, authorize the Sheriff's Department to accept a Homeland Security grant of $36,816 and appropriate the funds to the purchase of a SWAT robot. Supervisor Wingren. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move approval of Resolution 322-32014. And moved and seconded. Seeing no questions, all in favor signify by saying aye. Oh, aye. Supervisor Hardy. Um, I did have some questions, but it seems like we just took the vote, so. No, that's, well, I didn't, for some reason your I, thing I doesn't I thought I it. rang it in. Huh? I, I thought I hit the button beforehand. Oh. Um, can I just ask a couple of questions? Like, 
Can uh, you tell us a little bit about the SWAT robot? Is this primarily just cameras and microphones, or is there also um, weapons on this SWAT robot? There, there are no weapons. It has a camera. It has the ability to speak to somebody. It has the ability to open doors. Uh, it has a payload so it can lift things. Uh, it can open basically a class three door, so pretty heavy door. Um, this would be available to, we are a regional team, so this is regional SWAT equipment. It's available to all of the uh, counties and municipalities within our region, which is a 13 county area. There are four that are going to be given throughout the state for these robots. Uh, there are eight total teams. The other four teams have EOD, explosive ordnance disposal, teams attached to them so they don't need a robot. They have their own. Uh, we recently used one in a Washera County incident. Um, this has the ability to climb a steeper stair as well, and that's what we ran to in a Washera County incident. Do, do these have uh, any software support that we would need to be doing in terms of, um, I, mean, I don't know if it's one that has a computer or if it's just a you know fancy mechanical? It, 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 has, the, it has a remote control, uh, you know, obviously. Uh, it doesn't require any software upgrades that I'm aware of. It does have a two-year warranty, and it has a lifetime of uh, technical support 24-7. Okay, thank you. Okay, I didn't have my mic on. Uh, resolution 323-32014, establish salary for the Winnebago County Sheriff's position. Supervisor Rowe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would move for the uh, approval of resolution 323-32014. And Mike Colliard is in the back of the room and would like to give a brief explanation where the numbers came from for the first year of this uh, 2015. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The resolution before you uh, is calculated uh, by taking the sheriff's current salary and a step-up increase of $5,000 as a one-time step-up adjustment was applied to the current salary. And then for 2015 and each year of the term, it's a four-year term thereafter, an additional 2% increase uh, was calculated on top of that amount. The step-up increase uh, was, I think, based on two pieces of research. One is just looking at the history of how the board has set salaries for the elected, the full-time elected officials in our county. I looked at the history and determined that in 2008, the board... Uh, evaluated all really of our elected official salaries and determined that they were significantly below where they should be based on either the responsibilities or comparing us to other counties. And the board at that time approved a $5,000 step up increase for each of the three officers that, are, that were up for uh, re-election later that year in 2008, which were the county clerk, the treasurer, and the register of deeds. The other three uh, regular elected officials uh, we're on the alternate term, they're on four-year term cycles, but overlapping two years between the two sets of three. And so when 2010 came around or, uh, and the board considered uh, the similar adjustments to the three uh, official salaries that are on the agenda today, uh, apparently money was a little tighter, whatever the board's reasoning at that point was, they elected not to give that step up increase at that time. So here we're applying it essentially now. But to verify that, we also did our own research. We looked at what comparable counties are paying the sheriff, in particular in this case. And uh, we looked at uh, well, Winnebago County being the seventh most populous county in the state. Uh, I think the top three counties are in a different category. Milwaukee, uh, Dane, and, and Waukesha counties are much more populous. So I looked starting with Brown County at number four, all the way through Fond du Lac County at number 15. So I looked at that list of 11 counties. 
uh, determine the current sheriff's salary for all of them. If we look at the average, our sheriff was underpaid by a little over $5,000. So this step up should put the sheriff very close to the average of that group of comparable counties. It also matches the, uh, the step up increase that was given the other elected officials. So of course the percentage increases uh, for the first year, 2015, uh, listed on the resolution will show that the impact of that step up increase, but it's really a 2% increase on top of that one time adjustment. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Resolution 324, Resolution 324-32014, Established Salary for Winnebago County Clerk of Courts. Mr. Chairman, just a point of order, I think we've had a couple uh, resolutions in a row where people have tried to call in. I didn't, there, nothing come up here with lights. I mean, one of them said he didn't, he didn't push the button, but. Uh, I, I know my neighbor just tried to poke his button too and it didn't work. Oh, I don't, okay. I don't know okay, what's I'll, going on. I'll ask you that next week. Okay. Why don't you push your button right now before I go to make sure right, if we have to try to do something? I'm pushing it. You all got lights coming on? Mine didn't work earlier. I pushed mine before. I got one pushing it today. I don't know how it works. Mine's not working. 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 That, nope, that white box. Yep, just unplug that for a second. I'll plug it back in. And I'll see if we can. No. Have them try it now. Try it now once, Chuck. Okay. 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 Okay.
sort that I want. Resolution 325-32014. We got a vote, Mr. Chairman. 324. I don't, did we vote? I don't think we voted. Aye. Establish established salary for Winnebago County Coroner. Supervisor Rowe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for your approval of resolution 325-32014. It's been moved and seconded. Did you push, you tried to punch into? Okay, go ahead, Mr. Turner. Reason for the negative vote in the PNF. <laughs> Supervisor Brennan. That would be me. Um, <clears throat> my issue was I felt what was originally proposed to the committee for that salary was at, was adequate. Uh, my issue is that we are not it, to put the comparables together on this position is more difficult than any other uh, position that's elected because there uh, are, because of the way this department is set up in other counties, some are elected, some are appointed. Uh, you have an ME uh, to try and figure out the comparables of what's an adequate wage for this position. Uh, I did not believe we could get an ad accurate uh, comparable for that. So. Uh, when we increased the, the wage on this specific position, I really didn't feel that was justified So, uh, because of the lack of comparables. Uh, I'm sure that uh, the director can discuss that in his comments as well, but that's the main reason why I voted no. Okay. Who else wanted to talk? Supervisor Ramos. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd actually like to hear the director's comments in regards to this position. You've done a nice job with the other two positions. I guess I'd like to hear a summary of some of the comparable data you used um, to arrive at this recommendation. Thank you. I should probably quit while I'm ahead because those were easy compared to this one. <laughs> but no, I'd be glad to address that. Uh, as uh, Supervisor Brennan pointed out, this one is significantly harder in terms of a position to find comparables for. When I looked at the list of other 11 peer counties, the same group, only four of those 11 have a elected coroner. And one of those four, Sheboygan County, uh, compensates the coroner purely on a per call basis. There's not an established salary. Should also mention that county is voting tonight on a resolution to uh, eliminate the elected coroner position and convert it to a medical examiner position. So the other counties in the group all have me appointed medical examiner positions. Uh, that are not elected. Uh, of that group, uh, about half of them use uh, medical doctors, pathologists in the medical examiner function. There are, I believe, three that we know of that use someone who's not a medical doctor as a, patho or as a medical examiner, someone who's not a physician. Uh, and so we've looked at the numbers for those three. Actually, I got slightly different numbers than, than the coroner did when he provided his research, but they're in the same range. Uh, so, in my opinion, you know, as a human resources director, I can't consider that a pure direct comparable because there are differences to an elected opinion compared to an appointed in that the first thing you looked at in setting salary typically uh, under a compensation system is what are the minimum requirements for the position and that's very murky with an elected position of course because it's up to the voters to determine the best qualified. You can't set the minimum qualifications and, and for some other reasons elected official salaries tend to be set a little differently than, than an appointed position would be. So it's much harder to draw that comparable. If I look at just the four counties and I make a reasonable assumption on Sheboygan County, how many calls they get compared to the number of calls we get, uh, I came out with an average compensation of 57,881 just for the elected coroners. Uh, 
Outagamie County has a half-time elected coroner, so I doubled that salary, for instance, in that computation uh, to try to get something more comparable. Our current pay was 62527 so we were a little bit above the average there. Uh, when I fold in the three counties we know that have appointed non-physician medical examiners, I get a number uh, of 61426 Again, I'm making some assumptions there, so it's not completely precise, but that's right about where we are on salary. So I don't see a basis uh, on the comparables alone to adjust the salary, so I didn't recommend the $5,000 step up. On the other hand, there certainly are a lot of responsibilities associated with that position. Uh, the coroner came and spoke to those, and uh, we definitely want to be able to attract someone who is well qualified, since there is a danger that someone unqualified could run and be elected, especially if the salary is not attractive enough. So I think the committee essentially reached a compromise where we didn't have the comparables reason to provide the step up, but there was still some desire to provide an attractive salary. So this uh, proposal includes a step up of $2,000, uh, then the 2% each year. So it's calculated in the same way, but just for the $2,000 step up. Just, just a follow-up question really quickly. Um, in regards to Waukesha County, mm -hmm. do they have a medical examiner or a coroner? I didn't look at Waukesha County, to be honest. So I know I'm that positive. they were within the three that you didn't look at. The reason yeah. I'm asking is, if they had a coroner, for example, and their coroner's salary was actually less than ours, but it was a more populous county, then that might lend itself to asking us mm -hmm. whether or not we really should be increasing. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. Because, because we have such limited comparables. The only, well, the only county, I, I think Waukesha County has a medical examiner. I'm just not do. sure, so I can't say. I'm, I'm positive Dane and Milwaukee counties have uh, medical examiners, pathologists. The only county I know of that's larger than us that has an elected coroner is Outagamie, which has a half-time, it's considered a half-time position as an elected coroner at 32,770 would translate, you know, if you multiply it times two to 65,000, so slightly above ours. Uh, but some of the ones, some of the counties that are slightly smaller than us have significantly lower salaries, so it's kind of a right. hit and miss. That was going to be my ne next question. Okay, thank you. Was there Supervisor Haig? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In, in regards to the group of, of these three resolutions, I, I think this is in the area of state law that I, that I don't understand. I, I certainly think that you, you should pay the person and not the position, and I don't know why we're, why we're giving a raise to a position where there are so many unknowns here. Um, I don't think in, in the past we've had have had difficulty attracting people for these positions. I mean, you can tell me if I'm wrong. If we've never had people run for or um, want to become sheriff or clerk of courts or coroner for Winnebago County, and you know, I I always tell my kids, um, you know, you don't have to do the same things as everybody else. So I don't know why we think that we need to to jump you know, in line, so to speak, with the average of what everybody else is making. That seems, that seems a little awkward. Um, and also in, in regards to the, the backside three years of, of these raises, are we assuming that these other counties that we have um, information from are, are giving a 2% raise per year? Or do we know that? I think I'm positive that the major we're still below most of the other counties, even at the raises that we gave out. Uh, Mike, could you, Mr. Collier, could you answer that? More specifically in regards to the last three years, do we know or are we assuming that those uh, comparables are giving a raise in the last three years, a 2%? Well, for, for the next three years, is that the question, you know, for the upcoming term? 2016, 2017. Yeah. Yes. We're starting 2015. 2018. We, we do uh, have a, a regular uh, email list among personnel directors to try to keep tabs of what everyone is proposing. And so I have some information from some of the other counties about what they're proposing for the upcoming term. And, and there is a significant variation. Um, but, for instance, if I look at the sheriff... Uh, the email uh, report that came out from personnel directors uh, for the upcoming term shows, 
an average in see some counties just give the increase all at once for a four year term so if I add it if I add the four average increases together from among those counties that have identified what they're planning to do it comes to uh, about 9% over four years on average. So that's a little over 2% a year spread over the two year term. That's from the information available you know, as of a week ago, which was the most recent I could get. Uh, I suspect a lot of counties are voting on that actually tonight because it's a common meeting night for county boards. And on, on the front side of the comparables, you suggested the salaries, are, are the benefits the same? The comp, the, other than paid time off benefits, the elected officials generally do not get paid time off benefits because they don't need vacation. It, it, it's up to them how much vacation to take. Their salary is fixed regardless of how much vacation or, or sick time for that matter they take. Uh, they do get the same health insurance on the same basis as other appointed department heads would. And so that's a fairly common practice. As other department heads would in Winnebago County, but I'm, I'm yes. right, but I'm, I'm suggesting that these comparables with other counties, you suggested the salaries we might be behind in, but are, are our benefits better than what the re other sheriffs are receiving in other counties or other clerks of courts are receiving or other coroners, for example? Did you compare the benefits as well as just the salaries because that's part of it? The report I gather from other personnel directors does include a report on the percentage, for instance, of the health insurance premium that people pay. And most of them are in the range of 10 to 15 percent, which is the same uh, percentage we use. It's 10 percent or 15 based on whether the uh, health risk assessment is obtained. So I think, we're, I think our benefit package overall, based on my experience, is pretty comparable to most counties our size. Thank you. Supervisor Warnke. <clears throat> for those of us who have been here for a little while, um, we went through this coroner's thing um, many times. And um, I know you're not supposed to vote for the man, you're voting for the position, but as far as I'm concerned, we're getting a heck of a good deal with this wage. Um, they talk about medical examiners and the thing is that they're not telling you about is when you have a medical examiner, you're hiring a full a doctor, and he has to have a place to um, examine these bodies and everything else. There's a lot more um, money involved, and we um, hire a medical examiner case by case. Um, our coroner has been doing a, a good job, and for some reason, uh, the people, a lot of people on the board seem to attack the coroner's office. Uh, I've seen it where they wanted to cut out the T-shirts uh, that say coroner in there. I mean, it, it's gotten down to that. And um, it's no different than any other department in this county. Uh, they do their job. and. This is not a real big increase, uh, so I urge you to vote for this. Anybody else wanted to? Mr. Tur Supervisor Turner? Yeah, I was just wondering, last month, I believe it was, or here recently, we talked about per diem that the uh, coroner's office gets per, per calls and stuff. And tell me, you know, I'm, I, might, I might be off base here. Uh, does the coroner get those? Or is it just his people that uh, work for him? Uh, the coroner doesn't get per diems. It's just the, the deputies who get the uh, per diem uh, and the on-call pay. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No. One no. That is passed, Mr. Widener. Resolution 326-32014, amend the table of organization for Winnebago County Planning and Zoning Department. Supervisor Rule. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for approval of Resolution 326-32014. Second. 
been moved and seconded. Seeing there are no, is there anybody that has a question? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Resolution 327-32014. Appropriate $12,000 from the 2013 General Fund Undesignated Fund Balance to the Legal Service Account of the Corporation Council's Department's 2013 to cover a cost overrun. Supervisor Wingren. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move approval of Resolution 327-3-2014. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any questions? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Resolution 328-32014. Uh, the finance director has asked to pull that, so that is being removed. Res 328 was removed. Resolution 329-32014. Authorize the finance department to extend the audit contract of Chinook Business Solutions for a three-year period, 2014, 15, and 16. Supervisor Rowe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for the approval of Resolution 329-32014. Second. Been moved and seconded. Supervisor Haig. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In regards to, in regards to this uh, audit contract, did we also do the same type of research in regards to comparing to other counties and who they contract with and what, uh, what they pay in fees? They're really not going to be comparable because they're all different sizes. So every, every county is going to have a different audit fee based on their size as part of it and who they hire as auditors. Well, I, I certainly understand, but in the same regard, all the counties are different size when it comes to the sheriff and the amount of work that they have, clerk of courts, the amount of work they have, coroner, the amount of work they have. So I'm just curious. I, I mean, did no, I did not survey other counties. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want the, the county board to know that I'll be abstaining on this vote because I have family member that works for this company. So I will be abstaining. Supervisor Widener. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I got a question, a couple questions. Number one, did we go out for bids for anybody else to see if they would they would do the audit? No, we did not. Okay, um, I think we probably should have. Now, the second point I have is every time I see a comment that says, uh, "Whereas Winnebago County has been very satisfied with the work Schenck Business Solutions has performed," these are audits. These are trying to see if we're doing things the right way, and if we start getting very comfortable with somebody then are we really sure that we're getting an auditor that's taking a hard look or someone that says, gee, I'm getting along with them, let's just do that. So I think that before we do anything on this, we should get other bids and we should also look very hard at getting a second auditor and let them see what we're doing things correctly. It worked. <laughs> um, Mr. Widener, are you suggesting an amendment? No. What are you suggesting? <clears throat> okay, basically, without the uh, first question I asked is, do we have in our bids? Right. And they said we did not. Right. Then I was saying I think that we should be looking at other auditors. Do you think I should have an amendment for that? Well, it's a, it's a change from what's been presented here. I don't know if it needs an amendment or not, but, you know, I don't know if um, the relationship he has with Shank Business Solutions, if it's a solid business relationship and there is a level of trust between the two, um, I don't think necessarily it has to go out for bid because you come to a point now where you're comfortable with what their expectations are and what your expectations are. Um, so I just think uh, if, if, if uh, 
If Mr. Ornstein is satisfied with Schenck, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't go ahead. There were extensive discussions in the <coughs> PNF committee over it. So. Can I? Uh, okay, go ahead. If you look at the history of their audit fees, they've gone up 1% a year at the most. They do a good job. The, the cost of switching auditors is not just in the price. You also have new auditors that have to learn all the different departments' operations. They end up spending a lot more staff time in different departments in the process of understanding what they do. It's very time-consuming for the departments, and it's a, it's a tough thing putting out a, a – it's a very time-consuming process. That's not an excuse to not do it, but their fees have been really – uh, stable. The last audit firm we had, every time a new accounting pronouncement came out, they wanted an adjustment to their fee because they said it was going to take more time. We've had lots of uh, new accounting pronouncements come out over the past six years, and they have never come to me and, and made that argument. So they do a good job. It's, 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 it's costly to all the departments that have to train them on what they do. And their fees have been, their, the increases are so minimal that um, I recommend that we go ahead with this. Supervisor Widener is ready to jump out of his chair. Okay. Um, basically, and, and I was ready to, to, to pass on, but I will say, to me, the point is we've got somebody coming in and Any has more? to ask questions about how we do things is exactly why we have an auditor. And we're not looking at this from a cost standpoint. I didn't make the comment about do we get bids. That was a question. But the, my feeling really is really strongly that when you're having an auditor, the person's coming in is supposed to be looking at what we're doing as are we doing things other than just the general accepted, um, whatever they call that. Um, so, and I, uh, uh, Chairman Albrecht, a comment, this was discussed a lot in the uh, personal finance. I hope they went through that same discussion. But um, I always believe that we should be changing auditors after three to four or five years at the most and I make that recommendation at every other agency that I'm involved with where we get involved with auditors, and uh, we have done that. And that's, that's my point, and uh, obviously I'm on the, the, the back end of it, but uh, we should be doing that. Thank you. All in favor signify by saying aye. Go ahead. Who's next? Supervisor Finch. I, no, no, I you know, just requested to hold my machine. Oh, okay. That is passed. Resolution 3303214. Opposed 2013 Assembly Bill 750, local minimum wage. Supervisor Brennan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would move for the adoption of resolution number 330-32014. Second. Then moved and seconded. Supervisor Haig. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In regards to this resolution and, and the following uh, resolutions where we're either supporting or opposing Senate bills or Assembly bills, I do appreciate uh, Mr. Bernan going through the trouble of, of printing out uh, the entirety of the, legis of the proposed legislation. Um, I'm curious to know, however, before we vote on this, how many of the supervisors of this body either read the proposed legislation or contacted uh, an elected representative of either the Assembly or the Senate and asked questions about um, these bills? Can I get it just a quick couple of couple people did? <laughs> we actually okay, had some people read it. I just ask because I, I, I see these resolutions appear on the agenda, and I just wince that uh, it's oftentimes to me to, just to be 
political staging. I know this is supposed to be a nonpartisan type body, but when I see uh, any number of these, I can't help but think that the origins of bringing them to this board are uh, are simply uh, partisan politics. So I would simply ask again, as I have in the past, that especially if you haven't either read the proposed legislation or talked with somebody in one of those bodies to get a better understanding of that, that you abstain from voting on these. And even though I did that, I'm going to abstain too, just so that whoever keeps bringing these uh, to the legislative committee would, uh, you know, stop, I don't want to say necessarily wasting, but spending a lot of our time on issues that we really don't have a whole lot of control over. And secondly, um, and again, I appreciate you uh, having the whole bill here, but a waste of a lot of paper and ink. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Olson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, uh, in theory, I agree with, with uh, Supervisor Haig, but you know, I, I did read through this, and quite frankly, I had to wrestle my way all the way through trying to understand the legalese. I wish that these bills were, were uh, written in language that we could simply understand a little bit better. So I'm just going to ask the basic question, um, why, why are we opposing this? I would prefer to defer to Supervisor Norton in regards to this because he was the one that uh, had brought this forward to the committee to address. Um, I think he's better qualified than I am to is, answer that question. Is this about, is this about um, uh, local governments uh, imposing a minimum wage on contractors? This is about local control, and people in Madison keep on saying they want local control, but they keep on hindering what local can do. Well, what does it say? Does this say that if a contractor comes to Winnebago County, no, 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 but this we have prohibit, we have to give them a this would prohibit. Now let me finish. Now, let me answer this question, because he's getting into it has nothing to do with a, a local wage ordinance. It's, it's, it's about a local wage ordinance that's been in place in the city of Madison and Dane County for 15 years under both Republicans and Democrats, both in control of the, the, uh, the legislature and in, in the state house. Milwaukee passed one, and within a week, they, this comes up. It has to do with local control. It doesn't have, and that's the thing. I keep on hearing from colleagues down in Madison, we want local control, but they keep chipping away. Not letting local governments do to their own areas, but they can't, what they can do what they can do and what they want to do. If any local Cali wanted to do this, I'm sure they'd get a hearing, just like Milwaukee did, and they'd hear from their people and they'd pass it on the merits. That's what Milwaukee County did. They passed it two months ago. They had a length of hearing time. This would prohibit any of this. And why? Why is it now? Because Milwaukee County passed it. They didn't try this back 15 years ago when Dane County had it. They're doing it now. Well, there, there are very obvious reasons why Milwaukee County passed it. I won't go and, into it at this point. But let me just say, I, again, I want to ask the question that, that hasn't been answered. Is this bill, does this bill allow local county governments, do they must offer a, a raised minimum wage for anybody to contract with them? In other words, if the, if the minimum wage is eight seventy an hour, in order for a contractor to contract with, with a local government, they would have to negotiate a higher minimum wage. That is my question. They'd have a living wage, and that's what this prohibits, which a living wage ordinance, which they do have in Dane County and Milwaukee County. How do you find a living wage? With all due respect, Supervisor Olson, that is, that is how they do in each county. What this does prohibits the localities from doing it. But, but you didn't answer my question. No, you're, you're not... How Milwaukee County and how Dane County, that I do not know. I'm trying to find out. That's the way they determine it. What this bill will not allow a local government or municipality doing it. That's why I'm opposing it. Let the local government do it. And if you want to have a discussion, if I would bring this up or anyone would bring this up and any local government want to do it, that's the time how you establish that wage. That's, that's different. The wage part is different from letting a local government unit do it. So you, you, you would, uh, 
you would say that um, no matter what issue comes up before the local government, they ought to have control of it? Well, like I say. Not just this issue? Like I say, 15 years. 15 years Dane County had it, and not a word was said. And now suddenly they, they're all armed about it. Well, I'm not certainly going to walk lockstep in whatever, whatever Dane County does. Well, with all respect, 15 years when... Our comments are supposed to be directed to the board. I'm sorry. Supervisor Ramos. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just kind of following up on some of the comments that I that I just recently heard um, in regards to this bill, and, and and kind of piggybacking on what Supervisor Hagen, I've talked about this at this board before, but at least what I understand with this resolution is to support uh, um, allowing uh, municipalities to pass ordinances so that there could be. Uh, a local minimum wage in place uh, for work done by, on behalf of municipalities. But that brings me to another point. That's why I've quite often abstained from votes on these is because it is confusing to understand when you're working on, on a county board exactly what's going on in the state assembly and state senate. And my view has always been let the state assembly do what it needs to do, let the state senate do what it needs to do, and let us as the county board do what we need to do. And so that's why quite often I have actually abstained for the most part uh, on most of these uh, for the very same reason that Supervisor Haig mentioned in the past. When these come forward, I gotta admit, I don't read the state assembly bills or the state senate bills. Now I did read these because they were attached to it. But when they come in the past, it always references them and I admit, I don't go looking on the ledger and read those bills, and I guess I ask myself whether that's really my duty. And I would argue that it isn't uh, my duty. And so because of that, for this uh, uh, resolution actually, as well as the ones that follow, I'll be consistent with my approach in the past and abstain as well. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Thompson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd like to begin with a question of the uh, county clerk um, and uh, then perhaps follow with a, a suggested revision. Uh, when you um, are required to forward our actions to some other level of government, uh, do you include the tally of the votes that was cast? Yes, you do indeed. Okay, then I need offer no amendments. Thank you. So it is understood that uh, whatever goes to Madison now or does not go from Madison does not include or does include the tally of our votes. Right. I thank you very much. Supervisor Widener. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a comment for Supervisor Haig. I did read this uh, several times did not know what it said when I finally got done. And, uh, I'm not the only one. <laughs> and I still don't know. So uh, I, I really oppose uh, abstaining, but I may be forced to do that this time also. Thank you. Supervisor Keel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is the sort of thing that I think let each other do our jobs, and I think we should be speaking to the things that are, are up for the county. And then we should all exercise our very uh, its base local control and contact the state senators, state assemblies, as it were, whatever. Um, it's just this sort of thing, uh, tally or no tally sent on to Madison is just kind of the thing that it, it allows us to, you know, make some hay and, and that sort of thing. But I don't think it really has a place here, so I'll be abstaining. Thank you. Okay, seeing there's no more, our little lights are working for some reason. We'll vote by our iPad. So what if I want to change my vote? I did wrong. Huh? Yeah, Mr. Finch left.
Pardon? I have a quick question on the lane. Okay, go ahead. Um, we had this, a similar situation like this last year. We did have a number of abstentions, and corporate council, corporation council had to go look at uh, how to count those abstentions. Um, and I don't really quite recall what the, what the answer was, if they were counted as a no or a yes or just a no vote. Yes. We have a lot, a lot of abstentions up here. Yes. So. I can tell you what it means. Corporation Council, did you hear his question? Supervisor Roll. I surely didn't plan to get into this discussion tonight. <laughs> but I will tell you that the solution that was reached in 2013 was incorrect. Uh, the the uh, decision that was cited uh, first by Corp Council and then by the gentleman sitting in front of me was one to deal with Door County. The problem with their findings were that the gentleman that, re, that abstained from that vote was required by law to abstain. None of the 15 of us, if it's 15, if none of the 15 of us were required by law to abstain, therefore those abstentions represent no votes. Thank you. Supervisor Widener. Well, I guess I went looking to get into a fight on the how we do this, but the, the ruling that we got from WCA basically said that if you abstain, then in effect you're not there. Okay, so it's a, it's a no, in effect it would be a no vote if you need so many votes to pass. What it also said, though, because you're not there, that when you look at the total votes up there, which we have here, uh, you subtract the number of abstentions from the number of people here, and then you look at what the votes were. And here we got 14 to, 14 to 4, so it would be 18. So the, uh, the quorum would be, what, uh, 10? And as long as you got a 10, then the majority vote would, would win. And they're at 14 to 4. But if you're abstained, in effect, you're not there, and your vote does not count. You can use your button, though. It's working here. Supervisor Farley. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, if, if I might clarify, we just had this issue come up uh, in the town of Vinland, town government. It went to our attorney, and uh, the position he took was that an abstention is basically a no vote. However, in this case, if we're going to say that the abstentions are not here, then you don't have a quorum. <laughs> you have the quorum of the people that remain. Well, however you want to look at that, but okay, that quorum is 19. Can you yes. So He's I really think we need to. No, we only had 18. So, what's their answer? My, my understanding of the way you folks, oh, I better get up. The way you folks ruled previously was that if a person is not required to abstain mm -hmm. because of a conflict of interest, in, in this case, in a majority vote of those present, that they are present and that's counted as a no vote. The abstentions? The abstentions are counted as a no vote because. You have how many present? 30, how many present? 15 abstentions. 33? You have 33 people present, and it's, it's not, it's, it's not two-thirds of membership. It's a majority of those present. You folks are present. You're choosing not to vote. Supervisor Konitsky. Uh, Chairman, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and counsel, and clerk, and chairman. What's wrong with turning in our vote just exactly so many abstained 
so many men and I and so many important names. Is there anything wrong with turning in a, a tally? Well, it's just no. that it, it's just that it's not carried, and if it's not carried, you're not going to send this down to Madison or to anybody else because you did not carry the you did not carry the vote. But you know what I'm saying. That, that, yeah, yeah, I, I, but but that's not what your resolution says, Tom. Okay. Your resolution says this should be sent to all your representatives if it carries. It it didn't carry. Okay. So this has failed, uh, Supervisor Hardy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to request that at our organizational meeting, April 15th, that this issue be resolved, and I think uh, Corporation Council would probably be the one to help us uh, put in writing exactly how to handle this issue. I mean, with a, uh, something like this, it's not a big deal. When we're talking about the sale of an ice arena or some other piece of property, it is a big deal. And so I think it would be very beneficial to the next session of this board if we could have Corporation Council help us put in writing how to res resolve well, you, this you question. Well, can, you can do whatever you want in relationship to Robert's Rules of Order. Your rules are going to prevail over Robert's Rules of Order. But one thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to tell you how to how to write your rules. You, it's up to you to do it. I can offer you suggestions, but you need to make that decision on your own. That's a political decision you folks need to make. I would like some suggestions, and I would like this board to adopt a rule at our organizational meeting April 15th. Okay. Thank you. Resolution 3-3. Three, three. Like can I say one other thing? Your, your rules right now, because this is something that came up with the previous thing, they say right now under 16.2 uh, that under Section 59.02 sub 3 of the statutes, all questions before the board are determined by a majority of the supervisors <coughs> present unless otherwise provided. And present means that you ha you're here and you have the ability to vote on the matter. You know, if, if, if your wife owns the property that's being sold, that's a different story. That's an abstention for cause. But, and you cannot vote by state law. But if you're present, if you're sitting here, you're not dead, that means you're present. And, uh, and if, you know, and, and I'm going on what your precedent was with regard to the previous resolution back this summer. You decided that that's the way you folks wanted to interpret it. Resolution 3323014. Support? Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Resolution 3313214. Support 2013 Senate Bill 550, Assembly Bill 711, Amendments to Workers' Compensation Law. Supervisor Brennan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would move for the adoption of resolution number 331-32014. Second. Then moved and seconded. Okay. Supervisor Haig. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In regards to this resolution, I would, I would ask the same of this board. If, if we don't, if you haven't read it, if you don't know what's going on, please abstain. I will be abstaining on this uh, for cause. Uh, in regards to this specific Senate bill and Assembly bill, it was introduced very late in the session, and it is still in committee, very unlikely. Uh, it went to the Labor Committee, very unlikely to see the floor anyway, so our vote is, it, it's meaningless to start with, but it's even, even more meaningless just because of, of where this legislation sits. Thank you. Okay, we'll whoop by a little iPad. Thank you. 
Let us fill. Resolution 332-32014. Support 2013 Assembly Bill 481, Sale of Tobacco Products. Supervisor Brennan. I would move for adoption of resolution number 332-32014. Then moved and seconded. Supervisor Eisen. Supervisor Eisen. I'm calling on you. Supervisor Eisen. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, if you take the time to read the damn thing, all it means is you're going to tax the little cigars the same as cigarettes. Okay, we'll vote on our little iPad. Resolution 333-32014. Oh, I'm sorry. Supervisor Rowe, did I miss you? Oh, never mind. 333-32014. Support. Request that the Joint Legislative Audit Committee approve an audit of the state non-emergency medical transportation program currently contracted to the Medical Transportation Management Corporation. Supervisor Brennan. I would move for the adoption of resolution number 333-32014. Then moved and seconded. Supervisor Hegg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would ask the same of this one, and maybe this one more so than the other, simply because uh, this is a simple letter requesting the audit it it has not only is it not supporting something that is a bill as as the other resolutions were uh, but as you see all the signatures that are on the letter you'll notice that most if not all of those are from uh, democratic representatives in the state assembly and senate uh, when I called Mike Ellis's office and asked about this piece of this letter, this request, it was not even uh, they, they were not even asked if they wanted to sign on to it or not. So I mean, a, a lot of these that I see that are brought to this board are political in nature anyway, and this one just seems even more political, consider, consider, considering this is an election year and. One of the first signatures on here is somebody who is going to be running against Mr. Ellis. So I, I don't, it, it may be very well and good that we do an audit of this particular program. It sounds like uh, the costs have been going up, that service isn't great, but at the same time, these people who are requesting should have at least run the letter by everybody to see who wanted to sign on to it before they sent it to these committee chairpersons. I'll be abstaining again. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Rule. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If you would allow me just a little bit of latitude, I'd appreciate it. I don't know whether it was the agenda was planned this way, uh, but I think it's very appropriate that the last four resolutions were brought forth by a supervisor who has served this county well. This may be his last meeting, and I would like to recognize Supervisor Brennan for his service to Winnebago County. I was going to do the same thing because there's several others that aren't going to be here. So after we vote on this, I will, I will recognize those also. Okay, well, uh, Supervisor Eisen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to vote for this, and the reason I'm going to vote for it because there's apparently a difficulty in getting 
uh, these providers uh, for the disabled uh, to get from their home to the doctors. And they changed providers, they changed transportation companies, but they didn't solve the problem of getting them better service. We got people talking here. I mean, we have people walking up, leaving because it's a little early. I think we owe respect to the board. We owe it to ourselves. I mean, several people left already because it was getting to the end and they were meaningless, but we're still here to do a job. Go There's ahead, something, Lee, something Lee patently wrong with the system going on there. They need an audit so that they can get at the roots of the problems and provide these disabled, elderly, and blind people uh, suitable uh, transportation and reliable transportation. And if you read the, the documents accompanying the resolution, you'll know the same thing that I know. Supervisor Rule. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you'll, you'll note that I had tried to ring in before the vote on the last one. It didn't make any difference. My comment was going to be that I wholeheartedly agreed with his comment on the previous resolution, and so therefore I voted yes for it. The previous two uh, I had abstained. Uh, this one I will also vote yes for for the same reasons that super, the supervisor behind me uh, from District 4 uh, so eloquently stated and were stated at the Legislative Committee, and I encourage you all to vote yes for this one. Okay, thank you. We'll vote by our little iPad. Is passed. Supervisor Robel. Well, first of all, uh, I would like to thank Jim Engelbert, or Supervisor Engelbert, Brennan, and Supervisor Tooze for their service. They won't be returning. Uh, we don't know on the election. Some might, some might not, but uh, we want to thank those three people for their service that they've done. They've enjoyed working with you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I'll move that we adjourn until Tuesday, April 15th at 6 p.m. Okay, we are adjourned.